pickup game is pretty much dead. The in-person game has really, really taken a hit, guys. And if you've been following this channel, um, I've been coast to coast in 2022, Fort Lauderdale, Miami, Indianapolis, Phoenix, Dallas, you know, the Bay Area. I've been to LA area, I've been to Lake Tahoe, I've been everywhere. I've had that car with me the whole time. I did not expect to drive it that much. Um, but that being said, I did have it as an X factor. Also, X factor would be my eyes. Um, and then physique, build, this and that. But even if you are the six sixes, you have a monumental task up against you, whether you're cold approaching, whether you're working app game. And we're extent, it, you know, essentially spend all our time talking to, trying to attract women, trying to garner women, trying to retain women. We do this and, you know, again, I've had a certain level of success and I've been a benefactor of kind of the modern dating scene, but then also a victim, so to speak. And I think a lot of you guys would attest to this. Even when you've had success, you'd be like, well, I wouldn't have met her if I wouldn't have been on Bumble or I wouldn't have been on Hive or I wouldn't have been this, that, and the other. Um, it It's still... The thing is, is there's too many options for the women. So they can be like the kitten with a thousand yarn balls bouncing around. And again, this is one of the realizations that I've made is that men have to continually be upping their game, up their game. Even when you're in a relationship, you got to become the fittest version of yourself. You need to become the richest version of yourself. You need to constantly be expanding, expanding. But what's the issue with that? When you're in a relationship, especially obviously like once you're having kids, and um, all that, you've got a monumental task, you've got a lot of obligations to take care of, so that kind of slows you down. It slows you down being in a relationship, but it also slows you down, you know, obviously trying to maintain all these kind of various relationships with these different girls, whether it's whatever we want to call it, like, hey, you're just hanging out, you're chilling with them, it's your standing contact, you take a lot of your time, a lot of your energy. The hotter the girl, the more resources it's gonna take, whether that's your time, your money or a combination thereof. The hot girls aren't cheap. Everybody's going for them. Everybody's bidding for their attention. And if you watch birds, this is gonna be a very, very good lesson to you. If there's a couple males and they're popping around trying to show out, trying to show out, and the females sometimes will be like hopping, looking, hopping, looking, hopping, looking. And she's kind of confused. Which guy should I go for? What's, what's the better mate? And that's what happens with these women. There could be 30, 40, 50, 100 guys. Who knows? A woman who has gotten to 30 years old has rejected thousands upon thousands upon thousands of men by the time she reaches 30. So in some respects, you can feel sorry for them if um, maybe a relationship didn't play out or this or that. But a lot of times you can't feel too sorry about the situation. And oftentimes your requirements go up as a man once you reach your once you reach 30 that can happen as well your criteria goes up sort of gaining ground but you're losing ground at the same time you could be you know you had could have more resource you could have a nicer car uh you could have a better house better situation more experience your game got better as far as like your in-person talking game got better your 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 deflections and your rebuttals got better and you're more kind of buttoned up, put together, and you don't maybe do simpy stuff, and you kind of know how to navigate some of these situations better, um, but you're taking on kind of the damage of aging. Men and women are gonna deal with this both, and I think that a lot of men have this, a little bit of a delusion that, okay, well, you're gonna come up, and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna make the money, and you're gonna kind of like focus on your grind, and then it's just gonna like suddenly happen, and you're gonna get this like dime piece chick, and then, oh, you're just gonna suddenly decide to marry and settle down with her. Now, I've seen some guys try to say this, oh, I think I'm gonna date her. And it's just like, the chick is just way out of his league. And it's just like, she has so many other options. It just doesn't make sense. And it's like, how much money is he gonna pour into it, pour into it, pour into it? And they want everything paid for, everything paid for, everything paid for. And this becomes a very, very, very tough thing. Are you paying for it kind of like sort of upfront? You know, and you're paying into it, paying into it. Or let's just say you did settle down with the chick that was less demanding on the dates and 
uh, didn't really expect you to pay for everything and everything, but then she divorces you after five or six years. And at the end of the point, then you pay for it on the back end through the divorce, the alimony, all this kind of stuff, all the assets you lose. Uh, so all these things are very, very tough. And one of the things that I've realized of working game coast to coast is the fact that a lot of these women at some point realize that I'm not the guy who's going to save them. And oftentimes, and this is a very like tough situation. Let's say we have a single mom situation. She's very hot. She's still a showstopper. And you're just left like, man, if I could have just met her like 10 years ago or something. But that wasn't the case. And then it's like, well, you have leverage on her now because you do look like a potential bailout plan. She's into your look. She likes your car. She likes this. She likes that. You're interesting. But then over time, she kind of realizes, okay, like, I just don't think he's not going to be my savior. He's not going to swoop me up, put me in a new house, take care of my kids from this other baby daddy. It's just, again, and a lot of times you can't kind of build this up and they would have to say exactly the right things. That's the thing. If, if you're a single mom and you're watching this, you have to play everything right. You have to play the part. If you act out of character... And um, it's going to take a while for a man to vet you. He's going to test you. You're testing him. It's going to happen over time. But you have to essentially do everything right. You have to be hotter than the women that don't have kids. You have to be nicer than the guy than the women that don't have kids. You have to be hotter and nicer <laughs> than the younger version of yourself. You know? So, um, you just really have to be a compliment to his life. You can't be slowing him down. You can't be you know, busting his balls over this or that. And again, a lot of times women can't act the part because they sort of expect so much because we have these eSIMs just sending the money or a cash app, Venmo, um, guys just simping out, ready to cut the right arm off, do anything. I'll do anything to be with you. They don't want those guys. Those guys are needy. Those guys aren't the guys of value. They all want the upper end guy and don't have any delusion about it uh, a lot of times these single moms that are maybe even overweight or something like that they think they deserve to be with a celebrity or to be with an mlb all-star and that's your competition guys that's your competition and at the end of the day it comes with the range that we can move in if i'm moving coast to coast and that's my range what about in geronimo's day you know he rode these mountains you know he was, he was out here. He rode in those hills. You know, he rode the hills down south, but he probably didn't leave much of Arizona and maybe some into New Mexico, maybe down into Mexico a little bit. They weren't going thousands upon thousands upon thousands of miles, you know, on their horses. Now we got the steel horse. <laughs> so it's just, um, it's kind of one of those things. You have to realize that Women, they're getting hit up, even even when they're 16, 17, 18, they're getting hit up by guys maybe clear across the country or guys at other schools and stuff like that. So there's just a lot of competition you're up against. But the game's blown out because women expect too much, and a lot of women aren't going out. The bars never return to what they were pre, prior to COVID hitting. Uh, this is one of the things that I've realized. We've got a train coming in, guys, so hopefully it's... It's not too loud. Looks like Burlington, Northern Santa Fe. No, it might have been Union. It's Union Pacific. So, that being said, the whole game of going out um, is is somewhat busted. And after this Halloween, I, you know, and I had already kind of determined I want to play it out to see like what's going on. And I made a lot of good contacts and stuff like that. Um, you know, which kind of ropes it into further in your game. You can keep giving exposures and stuff through Instagram. Uh, but it, it's just less and less likely that you're going to really have like monumental success. Unless you're living like right downtown, you're in the scene, you've got a really good look, you've got the height, you've got some of these X factors like the car, maybe it's your eye collar, maybe it's your facial structure, maybe your facial hair is like really good. You got all these things, and you really got it buttoned up. I ran into other super slayers, you know, out of my time, and, and talked about their game and 
what worked, what, what didn't. A lot of guys were ending up empty handed. Maybe get a few contacts. There'd be guys with a really good look that were like actually scared to approach. They're waiting for girls to approach them. But that's not, most places that's not gonna work. It's not gonna work in the United States uh, for the most part. Sometimes girls will approach, but that's a, that's a lot more rare. Now that being said, what can we do going forward? Because we have to have a solution to this. Again, I'm not saying that you don't, totally don't use the apps because I've definitely made a lot of contacts, probably a little quicker um, off the apps, but you've got to really build your network. And if you are out, not only be looking for the girls, but talk to these other guys that are working game that you see that have elite game. Get in contact with them. You need them as wingmen, either for that night or for in the future. It's about the time you're in the social circle. Maybe you both got cool cars. Maybe you're able to lever that. Maybe you're able to um, help each other beef up your Instagram by taking pictures of you with their car or acting like you're racing your cars or just whatever. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's all these facets. The car itself is not going to get it. And your look is not going to just get it. The way you talk is not going to just get it. You have to have 20 or 30 of these different facets to you to kind of accumulate into your overall game and for it to be elite. So that being said, you have to look like you're upward projectable and that you've already made it, but that you're going to even make it that much more in the future. And you always have to kind of remain somewhat of a mystery to these women. So if they see like a little piece and then they see another little piece and then they see another little piece, it keeps them in the loop. But at the end of the day, you're going to expend a lot of energy, a lot of resources, just continuing to talk to these women and um, giving them the attention that they're going to need. Because a lot of times there's other guys hitting them up, other guys hitting them up. And sometimes it just becomes right place, right time. I fall into that situation. You're working enough game, right place, right time. Things line up. When it rains, it pours. That being said, guys, what's been your experience going out, doing a cold approach game in the United States, Canada, UK, Australia, anywhere? What's been your experience? Please like this video, subscribe to this YouTube channel, and we will see you guys next time.